Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And in this video I'm going to be uh, taking around the wheel well to give you a tour of the hydraulic components uh, in, to be found in there. I recommend to get the most out of this video you also watch it in conjunction with the, the hydraulics presentation that I'll be releasing around about the same time. As always, please treat your company training and their manuals as the authoritative source of information. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And today I'm going to be showing you around the hydraulic components in the wheel well of a Boeing 737-400, courtesy of Cranfield University. Okay, we'll start with the, uh, the hydraulic reservoirs. We've got the A system here and the B system reservoir here. Uh, quite a difference in size as the, the B system reservoir is around about a 31 litre capacity. The, uh, the A system is just 21 litres, so uh, a bit of a difference there. The actual quantity is shown on the quantity gauges here, and there's a sender above which sends that fluid quantity level to us in the flight deck. Exactly the same on the A system as well, quantity gauge and a, a sender for the, for the flight deck. At the top of the reservoir, you'll see that there's a vent line which interconnects between the, the, the two reservoirs. Uh, that takes any, any residue of, of hydraulic fluid away. They meet here and then come across the, the wheel well, across this pipe, all the way over to the aft wall and down and then pop out of a drain tube just underneath the, uh, the wheel well there. On the vent pipe, you'll see that there are two connections to it. These two small connections, they're compressed there from the pneumatic system. And this is the to put a head of pressure on the hydraulic reservoirs, on, on, the, on the fluid. Um, that stops any foaming of the of the hydraulic fluid in there and ensures that there's a positive head of pressure of the fluid to, to the pumps. So these two pipes come down and go across here and this is the reservoir pressurization module. And you can see that on this particular aircraft there are two independent pressure gauges here and here. Uh, the green band for these is 47 psi. Uh, most um, 737s now have just got a single hydraulic uh, reservoir pressure gauge. So the, the, the fluid's in here, it's got a head of pressure on it, and again, you ju just to make the point that this is air pressure that, that these are measuring, not the hydraulic fluid pressure, you know, at, or the output pressure of the pumps which is around about 3,000 psi. This is just 47 psi air pressure. Okay, so the, the, the fluid's in the, the tank and it gets used in one of several ways. Uh, the pipe at the back goes to the engine, uh, sorry, to the electric pump, which is located here. Uh, the electric pump, um, it's, Smaller in, in capacity and power than the engine driven pump, uh, but nevertheless uh, quite effective. Uh, it's got an overheat uh, temperature uh, gauge on there, or, or a sender, sensor, which sends to the, uh, to the flight deck. The fluid comes out through this acoustic uh, filter, which is effectively a silencer, so it reduces noise and vibration levels out this pipe here and along to the, the hydraulic pressurization uh, hydraulic pressure module the other input for, for this is from the engine driven pump engine driven pump the fluid for that comes out of here from the the reservoir and along and off towards the the pylon for the engine one other thing to point out is that um, when we uh, if we pull the the an engine fire switch what happens is that there's a valve which is just here, you probably can't see it at the moment. Uh, that valve closes and that shuts off the fuel, the, the, the hydraulic fluid 
to the engine driven pump. It doesn't stop the pump, the pump can't be stopped, it's, it's physically attached to the, uh, the accessory gearbox on the engine. But, uh, but what can happen is it, it can stop the, the, the fluid going to it. So that, that will help if uh, there was any damage in the engine, uh, there, there wouldn't be a hydraulic leak from the, which would drain the, uh, in this case, the, the, the B system. The return for that again comes back in uh, to the to the pressurization module. So in here we, we've we've got the, the feed from both hydraulic pumps. The pressurization module sets the uh, sets the pressure. It regulates it. It, it cleans the, uh, the 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 fluids with these with these filters here. Um, the the pressure information is sensed and sensed up to the, the flight deck and, and wherever else it's needed, here and here. And then the output are off these various pipes here to, to the various services around the aircraft that, that require hydraulic B. When the fluid returns uh, in, into the wheel well from whatever services it, it's been used, it's, uh, it, it passes through this return filter. Um, if this should clog, um, a, an indicator will pop up here and be visible. If it does clog, the fluid can still pass, it, it, it will bypass the, the, the filter, so you've still got the use of the hydraulics. The fluid then moves from here, up this line, along so, and re-enters the, the B-system reservoir here. Uh, so that's the that's the flow of the B system. The A system is very similar, and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, but just before I do, while while I'm on this side of the aircraft, I want to show you the uh, the, the charging point for, for, for to refill. So we've got here a, a, a hand pump that you would you would crank, and on here you've got a, a hose and a wand which you would put into the the, the, the can of hydraulic fluid, and then exercise the pump to, to draw the fluid into the um, in, into the reservoirs. You select here which reservoir you want. This is A, B or off. A is self-explanatory. If you, if you turn it to A, the fluid will go into the, the, the system A reservoir. B, bizarrely, the fluid actually charges the standby reservoir. Standby reservoir as I said, it's the smallest of the three, around about a, uh, a 13 litre capacity from, uh, from memory. So the, the fluid goes in here, this is full, so the excess fluid comes out and goes into the B reservoir here. So that's how you, you charge the B reservoir. While we're talking about it, uh, let's cover the, the, the standby components. So I so say we've got the, the standby reservoir, fluid in, fluid out to B. Um, standby hydraulic quantity uh, sensor, so it goes off to the, um, to the low quantity light in the, the flight deck on the flight controls panel. The output comes along here and into the, the standby hydraulic pump. From the standard by hydraulic pump, goes along to the case drain filter there, and then up into the hydraulic pressurization module. The function of that's exactly the same as the one I showed you for the B system, and the A system's got one as well, so it regulates the pressure, cleans the fluid, and sends it onto the services as needed. When the hydraulic fluid returns from the services, comes back along this line here, and re-enters the reservoir. Uh, try and think if there's anything else I've, I've missed on the hydraulic system from this. The PTU. Um, the third output from this, we've, we've already mentioned the electric pump, the engine driven pump. This third line down is for the PTU. Flows along the, the, the front of the wheel well and comes to the PTU here. So remember the PTU if you've lost B system pressure, but you've got fluid, this will use A system pressure 
to use the B system fluid for the uh, for the leading edge devices, auto slats and the like. Okay, I'll move around to the other side of the wheel well now and just show you the A system components. Okay, so now I'm stood in the uh, left hand wheel well looking toward the forward wall and uh, th this is just to finish the, the, the tour of hydraulic components in the, in the wheel well on the 737 Classic. So this side we're, we're looking predominantly at, uh, at A system. So you've got the A system reservoir up here, uh, you've got feed lines for the, uh, the engine driven pump which goes along the back wall here. And this probably a better view of the of the valve than I was able to show you on the B system side. This is the the shut off valve. So when you pull the uh, the engine fire switch, then this is the where the, the, this is the valve that closes. Because uh, obviously the engine driven pump is physically on the engine. If that gets damaged, there there could be a, a, a loss of hydraulic fluid. Um, so that that helps prevent that. The electric pump the feed for that is here comes down this pipe into the electric pump um, electric pump uh, we've got an overheat uh, uh, and a uh, and a low pressure um, sensor on this the fluid comes out through the acoustic damper again to re reduce the noise and vibration levels up it goes to the hydraulic pressurization module for a system very similar, uh, near identical operation to, to that on the uh, on the B system. Again, we've got uh, pressure sensors here. Um, this regulates the pressure. We've got filters. We've also got a case drain filter here for the uh, for the electric pump, which I uh, I didn't show you before. Um, and the hydraulics are sent out to the various services. Return line for the hydraulics is. Uh, sorry, through the uh, through the hydraulic return filter here. Again, if there's any blockage, uh, we'll get uh, this indicator pop up. Then, from there, it goes along the back, up this pipe here, and back in to replenish the uh, the, the filter, the uh, the reservoir. Um, one thing I didn't mention before when I was talking about the the standby hydraulic system, obviously we're in a classic at the moment. Um, the hydraulic pump for the later versions, the uh, the NG and the Max, is actually located has been moved away from the wheel well, and it's located just after the uh, at the wheel well, um, be behind the, the the right landing gear, also the um, the accumulator as well. The hydraulic reservoir on on NGs and Max has moved back near, near to the the aft wall. But otherwise, uh, it's it's pretty much identical. Okay, thanks for your attention, and again, my thanks to Cranfield University for the use of their seven three seven. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and tell your colleagues. Thanks very much.